The Google Pixel Watch 2 continues impressing me in 2024, even after testing it for several months. However, compared to my initial review, I have encountered some issues, and today I'll share all of those findings with you. We will systematically test the Pixel Watch 2 on myself for heart rate tracking during different exercises, compare the sleep stage tracking against an EEG device, and also take a look at the GPS tracking consistency. And we will not just test this on myself, but we will also test the watch on Teresa. So let's get to it. The Pixel Watch 2 has a bunch of new sensors which are supposed to make it better than the original Pixel Watch, but is this actually true? Well, that's what we will test in this video. I tested the Pixel Watch 2 when it came out originally and I was generally very positive, but in the meantime I've tested it much more thoroughly, comparing it against the Sleep EEG device for 12 nights and testing the GPS consistency over 10 bike rides. However, I want to start off by testing the heart rate tracking performance, which I tested on myself during a total of 56 workouts and on to Risa for 13 workouts. And to get a fair set of data, I also retested the original Pixel Watch. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, as always, I want to start off by looking at one of the easiest exercises for a watch to track, spinning indoors, which I tested on myself for 16 spinning sessions. Now cycling indoors is a relatively easy exercise for a watch to track given the limited movement and lack of tension on my arm and here you can see an overview of the results. Now to test the performance I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Pixel Watch 2 against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. Now each dot in this plot is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Pixel Watch 2 and the closer the points are to this blue line the better the agreement and the more dots that there are the darker black the color. And as you can see overall there is a very good agreement between the Polar H10 and the Pixel Watch 2. There are a few points here above the blue line indicating that on a few occasions the Pixel Watch detected a too high heart rate but mostly it appears to be on point. We can also see that the correlation, this R value up here, is quite high at 0.97. The correlation cannot be higher than 1, so a correlation of 0.97 is pretty good. But let's take a look at the individual rides to see why there are still some points above the blue line. And here you can see the first example interval spinning session where we actually see a pretty good agreement between the Pixel Watch 2 and the ECG chest strap. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. With in blue green my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red my heart rate according to the Pixel Watch 2. And as I said for this ride we see a very good agreement and this is true for many of the rides. Also right here for instance we see a really good agreement only here in the lower heart rate range sometimes detected a too high heart rate but just for a little bit and other rides like this one right here for instance are more or less perfect I would say only here again in the lower heart rate range is there a bit of deviation. However the reason we didn't get a perfect correlation in the overview we were looking at before because there's about three or four rides like this one right here out of the 16 total that showed some minor or somewhat minor issues and you can see that in this part and this part of the training right here where for some reason it really detects a spike in my heart rate where in reality my heart rate went down. And again we also see some minor spikes here in the very low heart rate range but the biggest issues are right here and right here. However these tend to be a bit more of the exception than the rule so most bike rides look like this or maybe a bit worse than this one right here so pretty good. Though as I said there were a few more sessions that showed issues like this one right here for instance where especially in this part of the training the heart rate was too high. And also for this trading session right here, twice the heart rate was too high. And this really appears to be the reason why we saw those points above the blue line. So this is looking pretty good with some minor issues, but let's put these results into context by comparing them against the results I got for many other devices I tested previously. This way you can determine if there's possibly a better choice waiting out there for you. And that overview is displayed right here. Now the correlation value I was talking about before is the metric we will use for this, which is displayed along the horizontal axis right here. And we want that value to be as close to 1 as possible. And on the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher device is, the better is its correlation with the reference device. And here I marked the Pixel Watch 2 in red. And as you can see, it's really among some of the top performers out there. It's not the absolute best, but it's really among some of the better watches out there. 
Now regular viewers might notice that the Pixel Watch 1 compared to previous videos moved on quite a bit in this ranking and that has a reason. I realized while making this video that after a data loss some months back I only had a few exercises left for the Pixel 1 and for these particular examples it performed quite well so it was quite high in this overview but these were only based on two or three sessions so not really a big data set. So I now collected a lot of new data to give you a fair comparison with enough data and now also tested in the same period as I tested the Pixel Watch 2 and it's clear that the Pixel Watch 2 is doing a lot better than the Pixel Watch 1 which is all the way down here and has a correlation of about 0.7. And one last important remark is that I did remove quite some watches from this overview just because it was getting so crowded so some older generation watches were removed for now but you can still find them in my old overviews. So overall the Pixel Watch is doing quite well when it comes to cycling indoors. It's showing some minor issues but nothing that would hold me back from recommending it to friends or family. It also seems to have improved compared to the previous generation Pixel Watch. However cycling indoors is a relatively relatively easy exercise so let's make things more difficult and let's see how the pixel watch 2 did for running outside this is a bit more difficult because of the increased bumpiness let's have a look and an overview of that is displayed right here similar to before but now for running and again we see quite a good correlation at 0.96 so very similar to the 0.97 we had before but one thing you can see that here in the higher heart rate range sometimes there's a cloud of points a bit above the blue line and this indicates to me that potentially there's some cadence lock going on where it was measuring my cadence instead of my heart rate. Now cadence and heart rate are pretty close to each other so if you see some points above the blue line like this systematically it could be an indication of cadence lock. But let's take a look at the individual runs to see if this is indeed the case. And here you can see the results for my first run which looked pretty good only right here was there a spike in my heart rate that wasn't really there. In this second run we also see on a few occasions that the Pixel Watch tend to detect a bit of a too high heart rate so it was really a bit noisy on the peaks of my heart rate. However for other sessions like this one right here it was more or less spot on I would say. There's some small issue right here but overall pretty good. And that appears to be the general pattern. Some runs are really good like this one right here. Some have a bit more noise especially on the higher heart rate areas like this one right here. You can see that for instance in this part of the run but also right here. But there were also one maybe two runs where the watch systematically detected a too high heart rate and you can see it most clearly in this run right here. So in the beginning it's still pretty good but then all of a sudden it keeps detecting a too high heart rate and this is most likely cadence lock. So we can see for instance right here near the end of my run according to the ECG chest strap my heart rate was likely around 150 bpm but the Pixel Watch 2 detected a heart rate of around 160 170 bpm and this is likely the frequency at which i was running but we can actually check that now i actually measured my cadence which is indicated by these dots right here and you can see the values on the left and as you can see actually for the whole run my cadence tended to be between let's say 160 and 170 spm and my heart rate in this last part of the training was close to 150 bpm so most likely indeed the pixel watch 2 was detecting my cadence instead of my heart rate and here we have a similar overview to be before, but now for running with again the pixel watch 2 in red and as you can see also in this case the pixel watch 2 is one of the top performers it's not amazing like for instance apple watches are but overall it's doing pretty well only the coral space 3 also appears to do a little bit better though i have no idea if this difference is significant but overall a pretty good performer and again also a lot better than the Pixel Watch 1 right here which has a correlation of around 0.81 which is quite a lot lower than the 0.96 ish of the Pixel Watch 2. So I'm relatively happy with the performance of the Pixel Watch 2 though of course we do need to remember we had some cadence lock issues. However let's now make things even more difficult by looking at a much more difficult exercise for watch the track outdoor cycling. Now cycling outdoors increases the tension on my arms because I have to hold on to the handlebars and there's also much more movement and bumpiness making it much harder for the watch to get a clean heart rate signal. I tested the Pixel Watch 2 for a total of 23 bike rides. However, first a quick side note, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Also, I'm trying to become part of the first people who receive watches to review from companies like Garmin, Samsung and Google. And if you want to help me make faster and better reviews, it would really help if you like, subscribe and or comment. But of course, this is totally up to you. 
Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance of the Pixel Watch 2 for cycling. And an overview is displayed right here, similar to before, but now for cycling outside. And we see a slightly lower correlation now at 0.9. So not quite as good as we had for running and cycling indoors, but still pretty good. And this is actually quite good for running compared to other watches. We do see that there's a significant amount of points below the blue line here, indicating that sometimes at least the Pixel Watch 2 detected a too low heart rate. But let's take a look at the individual bike rides to see how often this was a problem. And here we have the first example bike ride I wanted to share with you, with again the reference in blue green and the Pixel Watch 2 in red, and it looks pretty decent. It's not amazing, so there are some small deviations, for instance right here and right here, but this is a lot better than most watches. Also for this bike ride here, it's not perfect. There are definitely some deviations, mostly when my heart rate is going up and down, but it's not bad at all. There are some bike rides which are better, like this bike ride right here, for instance, which is almost spot on. So I'm really impressed with this bike ride, but there's also bike rides that are worse, like this bike ride right here, for instance. Here the watch struggled a lot more, so it couldn't fully detect the peaks in my heart rate on several occasions. So for instance, right here, here and here. It's a bit of a mixed bag, but overall a lot better than many other watches out there. However, let's actually do that. Let's compare these results to many of the other watches I've tested in the past. And an overview of that is displayed right here, similar to before. And as you can see, it still has a pretty decent correlation compared to the competition. It's again not the absolute best out there. So we can see Apple watches are again the top performers, but the Pixel watch is in the next best category of watches together with, for instance, the Coral Space 3 and the Coral's heart rate monitor, some Huawei watches. And below this category of watches is a group of watches which is not doing quite as good, but still decent, like some Garmin watches the Whoop strap and also the Pixel Watch 1. So again, we see that the Pixel Watch 2 is doing significantly better than the Pixel Watch 1. Now, finally, let's take a look at the performance of the Pixel Watch 2 during weightlifting. Weightlifting is generally the exercise that watches struggle with most because there's so much tension on my arm. Let's have a look. And again, a similar overview to before, but now for weightlifting. And we have a correlation that's exactly the same as what we had for cycling outside, so 0.9. And that's actually pretty good for weightlifting. Most watches struggle a lot during weightlifting, and usually the correlation is quite a bit lower. But let's see what's going on here. And here we have the first example weightlifting session, which looks okay-ish. The first part of the training was pretty hard for the Pixel Watch 2, so it didn't detect most of my peaks in heart rate. But the second part was a lot better, and it more or less detected these peaks in heart rate. Now for some other training sessions it can even look a bit better like this one right here where I've maybe detected about 75% of the peaks in my heart rate or at least partially detected them. And also for this training session right here we see that most of the peaks are at least somewhat detected by the Pixel Watch. This is actually a lot better than most watches out there. And some training sessions are even better like this one right here where most peaks were detected and some are a bit worse like this one right here where maybe only half of the peaks was partially detected. Still, in my opinion, it's pretty good compared to the competition out there, but let's again put this into perspective. And again, here we have a similar overview to before, but now for weightlifting. And the story remains more or less the same as we also saw for cycling outside. The Pixel Watch is not the absolute top performer, which are again Apple watches and some selected Huawei watches, but it's doing really well compared to the competition. Other close devices are, for instance, the Fitbit Charge 6. And there's quite a gap then to the next group of watches, which include the Pixel Watch 1. So again, the Pixel Watch 2 outperforms the Pixel Watch 1. So the Pixel Watch 2 is doing surprisingly well during weightlifting. It's not perfect by any means, but it's doing much better than most devices out there. It detected quite a few peaks in my heart rate during weightlifting, so it's good enough to get a decent estimation of your heart rate. Still, I'd recommend using an ECG chest strap if you really want the most accurate heart rate tracking during weightlifting. Now, one thing I should mention is that many watches actually struggle with my heart rate compared to how they perform on some other people. So I also tested the Pixel Watch 2 on Teresa. Now I won't go into the same level of detail, but let's see how it did on her. Now Teresa didn't test it for indoor cycling, but she did test it for running and that overview is displayed right here. And as you can see, the Pixel Watch 2 generally performed quite well on her for running with a correlation of 0.97, so that's pretty good. So this is potentially looking even a bit better than it did on me because there's no real signs of cadence lock going on here. And looking at the individual runs, they really look quite good. Like this one right here, for instance, which was basically spot on. Also this one right here, which he started a bit later, still looked really good. And also this one was more or less perfect, I would say. It does have a slight time shift, but this might just be because of lack of syncing. So really the timestamp was out of sync. Overall, a really good performance on her. 
And here you can see an overview of the five watches Teresa tested for running. And as you can see, all of them are doing pretty good. So on Teresa, all these watches did better than on me. And Apple watches are again the best watches out there, followed by the Garmin Venue 2, then the Pixel Watch 2, and the Garmin Vivo Active 5 is the worst out of all of these. But they're all pretty good, honestly. And if we now look at biking outside, Teresa also gets a much better correlation at 0.98. She only did a single ride, but overall this looks quite good. You can see that right here for the bike ride itself, where we can see a really good agreement. Only some of the details are not matching, so some of these small changes in heart rate. But the overall patterns look more or less identical. Now again, a similar overview to before, but now for biking outside side and as you can see again apple watches are the best but they're quite closely followed by the pixel watch and the venue 3 and vivo active 5 are both doing a tiny bit worse and again here's a similar overview to before but now for weightlifting where teresa again has a really nice correlation at 0.97 so almost all points are on or close to the blue line so this is looking quite good and also looking at the seven individual weightlifting sessions they all look really good and you can see that right here for instance in this first example weightlifting session where the agreement is more or less perfect i would say also for this one, only small deviations, but nothing major, maybe right here at the end. Also right here, a more or less perfect agreement with some minor deviations like right here. Also this one looks really good and I would say the same for this one right here. So on Teresa, it really appears to do a lot better. And for weightlifting, we have almost an identical ranking to what we saw for cycling outside with the Apple Watch is doing best on Teresa, quite closely followed by the Pixel Watch then the Venue 3 and then the Vivo Active 5 by Garmin. But out of all of these, I would say that only the Pixel Watch and the Apple Watches are good enough for weightlifting. Overall, the performance of the Pixel Watch 2 seems better on Teresa than on me, but in both cases it's doing quite well. On me, it showed some minor issues for indoor cycling, and there were also some moments where the heart rate locked onto my cadence while running. However, still overall, it's amongst the top performance in terms of heart rate tracking. On Teresa, I did even better, being almost perfect, showing only some very minor issues. It's also a lot better than the previous generation of Pixel Watch, so the new sensor and software seem to give the Pixel Watch 2 a significant edge over the Pixel 1. Therefore, overall, I'd give the heart rate tracking of the Pixel Watch 2 around 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next, let's take a look at the sleep stage tracking performance of the Pixel Watch 2, which I tested during a total of 12 nights. To test the sleep stage tracking performance, I'll compare the Pixel Watch 2 to the ZMAX EEG headband, which can actually measure my brain waves. This device also has its limitations, especially when it comes to detecting awake time. I discussed this in several of my recent videos, so I won't go into details here, but what it boils down to is they'll mostly ignore the awake time detection in the analysis and focus on deep light and REM sleep. Let's get to it. And here I show an overview of the sleep test results. Now on top are the sleep stages as recorded by the ZMAX EEG device and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Pixel Watch 2. And each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the ZMAX was predicted as each sleep stage by the Pixel Watch 2. And if they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. Now, first of all, we see that about 88% of what was deep sleep according to the ZMAX was also deep sleep according to the Pixel Watch 2, so that's pretty good. Only about 11% was confused, and in this case with light sleep. Light sleep agreement was also pretty good at about 77%, with most confusion being with deep sleep in this case. Now, REM sleep agreement was the worst out of all of them at about 58%, but this is still pretty good as you will see in the individual nights in a moment, with most confusion being with light sleep in this case. And also some confusion with awake time at about 13%. Now, as I said, we're not going to focus on the awake detection, but just for completeness, the agreement was about 46%. But let's now take a look at the individual nights because these can really give us a lot of important information and the first example night we can see right here on top we have the sleep stages according to the zmax eg headband with along the horizontal axis the clock time and my sleep stages on the vertical axis and the bottom we have a similar plot but now for the pixel watch 2 and in purple right here, I highlighted the deep sleep as recorded by the EEG device. And as you can see, this matched quite well with the Pixel Watch 2. All three deep sleep segments detected by the EEG device were also detected by the Pixel Watch 2, so that's really good. And that's generally what we see for many of the nights, that there's a pretty good agreement in terms of deep sleep between the EEG device and the Pixel Watch 2. There will be some deviation like right here where the Pixel Watch detects a bit of extra deep sleep, 
which we can also see right here, for instance, where again, the pixel watch detects a bit more deep sleep. What we generally see is that most of the deep sleep detected by the EEG device is also detected by the pixel watch 2. The pixel watch 2 just detects some extra deep sleep. Now, before in the overview, we saw that REM sleep agreed the worst out of all the three sleep stages. What we generally tend to see is that the same segments are detected by the EEG device in the pixel watch 2, but the duration of the segments detected by the pixel watch 2 doesn't match completely with the EEG device. We see, for instance, right here, detected a bit more REM sleep earlier in this segment. Also right here, the position was a bit shifted and later in the night, it detected less REM sleep than the EEG device. And that's also what we see, for instance, for this night, where I likely had one, two, three, four, five REM sleep segments. And all of these were also detected by the Pixel Watch, just their duration was quite a bit different. For instance, right here, it only detected a little bit of REM sleep. And for instance, here in the beginning, the REM sleep was a bit longer. Also for this example night right here, we generally see a pretty good agreement, only this first short REM sleep segment was missed. Now, as I said, we're not going to focus on the awake moments because the EEG device detects a lot of these short awakenings, which might be more short arousals so not full awakenings, and these might not be interesting for us. So these are marked in green right here. But we do see that what the Pixel Watch says were longer awake moments also tended to be awake moments according to the EEG device. So the sleep stage tracking performance of the Pixel Watch 2 seems to be quite good. It detects almost all of the deep sleep that the EEG device also detected, but it does detect some extra deep sleep. It was also able to detect most REM sleep segments, meaning I could also see most of my sleep cycles. The exact duration of each REM segment was a bit different though, making REM sleep the worst matching sleep stage in my analysis, but it's still overall a good performer. However, we can actually check this by comparing the Pixel Watch 2 directly against many of the other watches I tested in the past. Now this graph right here shows you an overview of the agreement of different watches with different EEG reference devices. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now the better the agreement the more to the top right the device is. Now I have to admit this overview is slightly complicated because I use different reference devices. The devices not marked in any color were tested against the Dream 2 EEG headband which was my normal reference but Dream went bankrupt so I cannot use it anymore. The devices marked in blue purple were tested against PSG or polysonography which is the gold standard in sleep stage tracking and the devices marked in green were tested using the ZMAX EEG headband which we also used in this video and you can see the Pixel Watch 2 marked in green right here and as you can see it's doing pretty well it's not an absolute top performer but it's among some of the better watches out there now overall we see that for instance some of the best performers are again Apple watches but also the Nukua app is pretty good but it's not available everywhere in the world also the A Sleep Pod 3 is really good but this is really quite expensive and other good devices include, for instance, Aura Rings, the Whoop Strap, and all sorts of devices from Fitbit slash Google. So if you didn't know, Google actually owns Fitbit and they likely use the same sleep stage tracking algorithm in all of their devices. So we see a lot of these devices in this rough area right here. We have, for instance, the Fitbit Charge 5, the Fitbit Charge 6, the Fitbit Versa 4, the Google Nest Hub, the original Pixel Watch, the Fitbit Sense 2, and also the Pixel Watch 2 in this case. So it's doing pretty decently, but I don't think it's doing any better or worse for that matter than any other Google and Fitbit products. So the sleep stage tracking performance of the Pixel Watch 2 is quite good, about as good as all the other Google and Fitbit devices out there. Again, I suspect that all of these use the same algorithm and will therefore give similar results. Therefore, I would also give the Pixel Watch 2 4 out of 5 stars in terms of sleep stage tracking. Okay, let's next take a look at the GPS tracking performance of the Pixel Watch 2. I tested the GPS tracking by biking my usual commute several times and observing whether the GPS readings are consistent, which is good, or if there's significant variation, which could indicate a problem. And here you can see the results for 5 times I cycled to work. Now I always started my ride on the corner right here and I didn't give the watch any extra time to acquire the signal. And these green markers indicate the moment that the watch acquired the signal which means it acquired the signal pretty fast and all pretty close to this corner right here. Though it is quite noisy here in the beginning as you can see. But let's now zoom out a bit and see how consistent the signals are. And as you can see if we follow along the route it looks pretty decent for this part I would say. It's not bad at all. There's a bit of deviation for this track right here, but the others are pretty consistent. Again, a bit of deviation right here, but not so bad. 
also in this part looking pretty decent i would say here again there's one deviating signal but not too bad as well and then going along the route i would say this looks pretty good there's some noise right here which is a bit funny to see but overall here super consistent this looks pretty good then right here this also looks pretty good a bit of noise right here but overall a pretty decent performance but let's also take a look at five times i cycled back from work because there i saw a few more issues and here you can see the results again for five times i cycled back from work now where i always started my ride in this area right here so you can see that two times it took a bit of time for the watch to acquire the signal but not a lot of time and then if you look at the consistency between the signal there's still some deviation right here but this already gets a bit better down here so this looks pretty decent now one time i actually took a different route so we can ignore this so we only have four tracks left right here and we do see some noise in this signal so it's going up and down a little bit it's not very smooth so this is a bit funny for me to see also right here we see quite some really jagged edges in these signals so that's looking pretty weird most watches tend to have more smooth signals but the pixel watch really appears to have some jumpy jagged edges but still overall the consistency isn't that bad also right here around the corner it looks pretty good many watches struggle right here so that looks pretty decent we do see some deviation and some noise but overall honestly it doesn't look that bad also right here a lot of watches struggle and the pixel watch is doing pretty great actually also right here it's pretty consistent and also right here not looking too bad at all then here we do see quite a bit more noise and these jagged edges again i'm not sure what's going on right there for some reason in this part of the ride it really struggled a bit more also again here near the radio station potentially a bit more noise but then again here it gets pretty consistent again so overall it actually looks pretty decent even good i would say it's only this weird noise in the signal that makes me doubt what's going on there but overall, I'm pretty happy with this result. So the GPS tracking performance of the Pixel Watch 2 is actually quite good with these weird patterns sometimes. The consistency is actually quite good, but the signal does look a bit noisy. So we have these jagged edges and at times there's a bit more deviation than I'd ideally like to see. Still, taking all of this into consideration, I'm quite happy with the performance. Therefore, overall, I'd give the GPS tracking of the Pixel Watch 2 three and a half stars out of five and it's even getting close to four stars. So not bad at all. Now before getting to my final conclusions, I do need to mention some of the limitations of the testing that I do. As you just saw, I test devices on me and maybe some of my friends, which means we cannot be sure if all results translate to you, so I'd also recommend checking out some other reviewers. Second, my sleep EEG reference is not perfect, it does give us a general impression, but ideally we'd also test the watches more often against PSG. Okay, with that out of the way, what do I think of the Pixel Watch 2? Well, I'm actually quite happy with the performance of the Pixel Watch 2 overall. It did quite well in the different categories that I tested it in and it seems significantly better than the Pixel Watch 1 in terms of heart rate tracking. It's generally amongst the top performers for heart rate and sleep though not the actual top performer which is still the Apple Watch in many cases. However for Android users the Apple Watch is just not an option so the Pixel Watch 2 is quite good an alternative. Now I personally think though that the design is not that great for men and I would have preferred for it to be a bit bigger but that's very subjective of course. Also the way the Fitbit software is integrated into the watch feels a bit messy and it doesn't feel like an integral part of the watch. It's unclear to me for instance when looking at the menu if you should work out with Fit Workout which seems to be part of Google Fit or with Fitbit Exercise which is a part of Fitbit. But ignoring those subjective things and just focusing on the health and sports tracking performance of the Pixel Watch 2 it's one of the if not the top contender on Android. So if that's what you're looking for I can definitely recommend it. So overall for the sports and health tracking I'd give the Pixel Watch 2 4 out of 5 stars. Now if you do decide to get a Pixel Watch 2, a Whoop Strap, an Aura Ring, an HD Pod 3, another device or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, want to potentially save some money and at the same time support the channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now given that you watched this whole video on the Pixel Watch 2, check out this video on the Garmin Venue 3, another good health tracker on Android within the Garmin ecosystem or this video on my top recommendations for sports and health tracking. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.